Hello everyone, Lost One Triple X here with another mod spotlight for Thermal Expansion 3, this time covering the dynamos. Now Thermal Expansion 3 adds four different types of dynamos and these are going to be your main source of power. The difference between these and engines from previous versions of Thermal Expansion is that these don't actually move, so you can have banks upon banks of these and you won't suffer the same graphical lag if you're on a lower spec PC than others. Well the main thing that all of these engines have in common if we go in here on the right hand side to the energies tab they all have the same maximum power output and the same energy stored there is no uh, different tiers where it comes to producing more and more energy the only difference between them is what fuel they take so whatever fuel is most abundant to you that will dictate which dynamo is best for you at the time I'll go back into the tabs here you also have the redstone control tab where you can set how they react to levers as standard if you place a lever down next to one and then press the lever it just switches the engine off although you can adjust this if you so desire now as with all thermal expansion machines you can shift right click to pick them up I've got to put this one back down again now <laughs> you can also if you, if you when you put your conduit down you'll notice none of these obviously facing the conduit you can just walk up to them and sh uh, right click with a crescent hammer or an invar battle wrench and they will face in the correct direction like so we need somewhere for this power to go. These are energy conduits, by the way. They're covered in another video. And these are all going to be going to this uh, resonant cell we have here. Yep, on the blue side. Excellent. The steam dynamo runs on coal, charcoal, or coal coke, but it will also require a supply of water, which will be placed on this side here. You could also pump steam directly into it if you're using um, Railcraft or any other mod that produces steam. The steam would obviously fill up this side. This side's for your water. But we're going to be using coal because it's nice and easy and we have water buckets so we'll right click to place water buckets in you can just pump water in if you so desire especially from an aqueous accumulator which would give you infinite water but as we have these in there it's now starting to produce power if we go back to this tab here it's producing its maximum power and it won't be storing energy until the uh, um, energy cell is filled at the bottom there but we can stick a lever on and switch it off the next engine is the magmatic dynamo which can be run on lava or blazing pyrotheum. Lava is obviously very easy to get hold of, we'll just chuck a couple of buckets in there. You'll see it only has one space in here to place fuel as it only takes one fuel. Again maximum power is being used up and again we simply turn it off with a lever. Next up is the compression dynamo, we're starting to get a little bit more complicated now. This guy uses a, a liquid fuel, so either liquefacted coal, fuel, ethanol, oil, or biofuel. They're the fuels that it will run on if you're using various mods. The liquefacted coal is actually a liquid added by thermal expansion, and you get that by um, placing pulverized coal dust into a magma crucible, and it is an awesome source of fuel. You can, it also requires cooling, so you'll need to pump water into it, or you can use gelid cryotheum, another liquid added by thermal expansion and we shall pop in here some liquefacted coal like so and some water and it'll start to produce power lovely just like so fantastic again using its maximum power outage of ACRF per tick and it'll use this fuel up slowly stick a lever down there to slow it down and lastly is the reactant dynamo by far the most complicated of the, uh, the four now this requires a solid reactant and a liquid reactant Solid reactants is either sugar, gunpowder, blaze powder, or a nether star. Now, fear not, it isn't a waste of a nether star, as a nether star actually produces an insane amount of power for you. Next up would be the liquid reactants, in which case you can use energized glowstone, destabilized redstone, biomass, creosote, mob essence, sewage, or sludge. So, if you're using a mod pack, you've got uh, various options of liquids you can place in there. In this case, we are going to be using a nether star, and we're also going to be using liquid mob essence. I know mob essence isn't added by the mod itself, but it's easy to get hold of as I'm playing on a mod pack at the moment. And there we go, again, putting out exactly the same amount of power as the others. However, as it was a nether star that's put in there, that will keep on going for a long time before it needs any more reactant placed inside. And again, simply pop a lever down next to it to turn it off. And that pretty much covers dynamos. Again, the dynamo that's best for you is going to be the dynamo whose fuel source you have most available. As usual, feel free to ask questions below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Check out the video's description for a link to the mod page and check the rest of the playlist for more items and blocks from Thermal Expansion 3. Like, shares and subscribers are always welcome. Have fun and take it easy, guys.